In the last video, we started to study the concept of phoneme. A phoneme is our mental representation of a sound in a human language. For example, in, uh, if we have the sounds S and ESH, speakers of English would think that these two sounds are different. Mentally, they feel like they are two separate things. And as a matter of fact, we can know that there's separate things because if you switched one for the other, the meaning would change, as in sip versus ship. However, the same sounds can be classified differently in other languages. In Korean, the sounds S and ESH were actually two different personalities of the same mental representation. They were two allophones of the same phoneme. So we only saw ESH when it was followed by the sound E, as in Shigan, hour. And everywhere else we saw the S. So these two were allophones, and whenever we saw one, we never saw the other. So English and Korean organize these two sounds differently. In this video, we're going to look at the opposite example. We're going to look at two sounds where speakers of English think that these two sounds are just different personalities or allophones of the same phoneme. However, speakers of Hindi and Urdu might feel that these are actually different. So we have the sounds pa and pa, an aspirated p and aspirated p. And these two sounds are, as a matter of fact, physically different. Let me show you with my scientific instrument. So the first one is unaspirated, pa, and the second one has aspiration, pa, pa, pa. So you can see that the unaspirated one does not have a puff of air, and the aspirated one does. They are identical except for that. So these two sounds are physically measurably different. Um, however, from our mindset of English, we think that these two are just different personalities of one overarching reality that we're going to call P. That somehow, one P has two different personalities that are similar. P, Pa, and Pa. However, what does Hindi think in Urdu? Let's uh, take a listen at these two words. Pal. Pal. Again. Pal. Pal. And one last time. Pal. Pal. All right. So pal means to take care of something and pal means blade. Let me ask you, are these two different phonemes of Hindi and Urdu? What do you say? The answer is yes. First of all, and the most important reason is that we have minimal pairs for these two sounds. So the first word is pal, to take care. And it is identical to the second one, except for their first sound. So this one is pal and pal. You can see that they're identical, except for this one has the unaspirated one, and this one has the aspirated one. Because the only difference between the two is the this one sound, we call these words minimal pairs. They are words where if you switched this sound for the other, the meaning would change. As it in fact does. One means take care and the other one means blade. Also, I want to take a look at how they have the same environments. So here we have the unaspirated P and it is preceded by the edge of a word and followed by a long A, which is exactly how we find this aspirated P, preceded by the edge of a word, followed by a long A. So these two sounds are phonemes of Hindi and Urdu. Uh, people who speak these languages would think that these are two different mental realities and they can use them to distinguish between words as we just saw. We're going to write them with the slanted bars or slash to indicate that they are phonemes. So that's what speakers of Hindi and Urdu would think. But what would speakers of English think when they hear these sounds, when they hear P and Pa and Pa? Are they different phonemes? The first, uh, I want you to look at this English data set, 10 words in English. And the first thing I want you to do is to write these words down in regular English orthography. So grab a piece of paper, uh, say these out loud, and then write them in the orthography that you regularly use for the English language. 
So what are these words that are transcribed in IPA? Uh, please grab a piece of paper and go for it. Please pause the video. All right. So we have that these words are pat, pill, pam, pace, pin, and spat, spill, spam, space, spin. So we have a data set in English, small, but let's see what we can do with it. And some of the words have the aspirated sound, p, and some of the words have the unaspirated sound, b. So I want you to draw this on a piece of paper and then try to go through each of the data points and extract the in every environment where we find the aspirated p and the unaspirated p. So for, for example, in example number one, we would have that the aspirated p is preceded by the edge of a word and followed by the, by the vowel a. Uh. So I want you to go through every example and then fill these two out with the number of the example and the environments where each of these sounds occur. Please pause the video. All right, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Oh, I don't need this one anymore. So you should have for the aspirated one, that example one has the aspirated with um, the word etch before it and then the uh, after it. Examples two and five ha um, have the exact same phonet uh, phonetic environment. As you can see, we have the uh, aspirated P preceded by the edge of a word and followed by the vowel I. So we have this one here. In number three, we find P in Pam, so preceded by the edge of a word and followed by the vowel E. And here we have it preceded by the edge of a word and followed by the complex vowel A. You could also just write the like half of the diphthong and just write E. Um, so we have that we always find this one at the edge of a word and preceded by a bunch of vowels. How about the unaspirated one? In example six, we have that the P is preceded by the S and followed by the vowel A. Ah. In number seven, we find that it's preceded by the S and followed by the vowel I. We also find this in 10. In number eight, S and E as in spam. And in number nine, we have space for these two. So are these phonemes do we is there a minimal pair in the set the answer is no if uh, if we had a minimal pair then we would have a word like spat for example and it would have a different meaning from this one and we do not see that also um if we had a minimal pair maybe it could look like bat versus pat and these two words would mean something different so we don't have any minimal pairs so they're probably not different phonemes. So let's take a look at the phonological environments and try to figure out the pattern of wh where does this one show up and where does this one show up? And you might have already seen a pattern emerging. Um, they are in complementary distribution because you only find this one at the edge of a word in this data set and you only find this one when it uh, when it has an s to the left of it an s an s before it so hindi and urdu have the same um, sorry hindi urdu and english have the same sounds but they organize them differently in english we think that these two are different phonetic realizations or allophones of the same overarching phoneme p and that we see this one after an s and this one at the start of a word and by the way, this rule is incomplete. We'll come back to it when we study syllables. Where uh, We have this pattern in English, but in Hindi and Urdu, these two are different phonemes because we see them in minimal pairs. So two sounds, but, but English and Urdu do different things with those sounds. In general, a phoneme is a, uh, is a bundle of sounds or allophones that is perceived to be the same, to be perceived to be the same mental reality phonemes distinguish between words and they form minimal pairs and allophones are um, 
two sounds that are in complementary distribution, and they are the actual phonetic manifestation of how we're going to produce them. In the next video, we'll continue to look at the concepts of phonemes and allophones.